In the previous section, we reviewed structural design patterns. In this one, we will inspect the final group of design patterns, behavioral ones. We will begin the section with a really powerful design pattern, the strategy pattern. We will continue with the observable pattern to observe a value for changes. C Sharp is exceptionally powerful for this. Moving on, we will examine the command pattern, the template method, and finally, the state pattern. We will begin the journey through the behavioral design patterns world with the strategy pattern. In this video, you will learn what the strategy pattern is, how it works, and why we need it. Next, we will use it to implement a damage notification system based on the strategy pattern. The primary advantage that the strategy pattern brings to the game is the ability to pick the most appropriate algorithm from a group of similar algorithms at runtime. Let's quickly dive in an example that demonstrates both the need and the power of the strategy pattern. To demonstrate the strategy pattern, we are going to go to the game board facade. It's like we left it in the previous section, right here when we have all of these calls, but we're not starting the game. We're not actually beginning the playing sequence. And this is what we need to prepare before we move on with our damage notification system. Our damage notification system is going to be something that will notify the user for when his player or her player is taking damage. And the color of the notification will depend on the amount of remaining health. So before we do that, I'm going to implement the start turns method, which is the method that will be called as the final step for the initialization process and will actually be the one that will initialize the play round before the player starts taking turns with the enemies. So it's gonna be something like this. If we have some enemies, we're gonna pop them out. If we don't, then we will break and that would mean that the player has won the level. Now, if we have an enemy, we need a way to pull it out of the stack, out of the collection of enemies that we maintain. Remember, this is the point of having an I enemy interface that we can place all of our enemies inside the same collection, this abstraction that is offered by interfaces. This is how I'm going to get the current enemy. So every time we get into this while loop, we either have a current enemy or the player has won. Now, after we've picked the enemy out of the stack, we have this logic here where the player needs to attack the beast, the enemy, and the enemy then in turn needs to attack the player. So for the player to attack the enemy, we need to use the weapon. Remember, it's like we did in one of the previous videos. Oops, I forgot it's the current enemy. The variable is called current enemy and when the turn of the enemy arrives, we need to call current enemy dot attack passing in the player. Now what, you might ask? We need to show something on screen. We need to notify the user about both the amount of damage that the enemy has made and the remaining health. But the attack method doesn't return anything, it just accepts an argument. So we either have to go in every instance of this interface and change how the attack method works, or we need to do something less intrusive, which is to return the damage made by the enemy to the player. So the attack method no longer needs to be void, it needs to return an integer. And you can see in the little helper line that Visual Studio adds above the attack method that it has been referenced four times. And if you remember, we have three types of enemies. So one of these is the interface and the other three are in the enemies. So before we do that, I'm gonna create a strategies directory. So we're gonna place the strategies for notifying the user and then we are going to go and take care of that, of the attack issue. In order for the strategy pattern to work, we need one very specific and important thing. We need an interface. 
this interface will define the structure of the strategy, which means the structure of every algorithm that belongs to this family of algorithms. I'm gonna call this I damage indicator since we're implementing a damage indicator, an indicator that notifies the user for when their player is taking damage. Now, this interface must be public, of course, but that's the least of our worries since we need to create a method that needs to be implemented by every strategy, by every damage indicator strategy. Now, this isn't a concrete implementation, this isn't an interface. So, we have this function called notify about damage, taking two arguments, health and damage. And with that in mind, I'm going to create two strategies. We need two strategies. The first one will be the one used when the player doesn't have a critical health status. So the regular damage indicator will implement the I damage indicator interface. And within that, let's say that we want to use a special color to indicate that the player is taking regular damage within regular limit. The player is not in danger of losing the game. Therefore, let's say that we go with Scion. Then we print something to the console window, nothing too fancy, we don't want to scare the player since they have plenty of health left for the rest of the game, so I can write something like this. Player took that amount of damage points and still has that amount of health points remaining. I'm gonna put a coma in here so that it looks better. And here we go. After that, we're free to revert back to our original color. We could have saved that, but let's say that by default, the foreground color is green. Looks better on a command line. Next, let's create the critical health status indicator. This is going to be more aggressive and it needs to catch the user's attention since it means their player is probably going to lose the game. Therefore, again, we're going to implement the interface that defines our strategy. This is a different strategy. We could go so far as to name the classes using a strategy suffix, but that's something I prefer not to do. It's perfectly normal if you want to do something like that in order to tell them apart, but I like this approach. Now, in here, we want to be a little bit more aggressive, so we turn the color to red and write in a more aggressive style using capital letters and an exclamation mark. Of course, by the end of this, we need to revert back to our default color, which is green. And this is the implementation of the second strategy that we will now use when our player is taking damage. In order to demonstrate this, I'm gonna comment these out and I'm going to assume that the player is idle. The player is not attacking, only the enemies are attacking. That way we are forcing our program execution to head up to a point where the player has critical health so that we can test it in that scenario. Back to the program.cs class, we haven't been here for a while. We had commented out those lines of code to test the composite pattern. We can turn them back on so that the game can resume at its normal pace. Remember, we first check if there's a connection with the API. If there is a connection, we move on to instantiate a game board. But since we're using a facade, I'm going to create a new instance of that facade, call it game board again, and then call the play method. The next thing that we want to do is go to the game board facade and actually run the start turns method because we hadn't run it before. 
Now, the last thing that we need to do before we're able to demonstrate the power of the strategy pattern is to modify our enemies in order to make sure that the attack method returns the amount of damage caused. So I'm going to go to the interface and change the return type from void to int and then I am going to open up all three concrete implementations and then switch it there too. Otherwise the program wouldn't compile. So that's the power of a typed language. So let's return fixed values for now. So this, let's say that the giant causes damage of amount to 20 to 30, excuse me, and the werewolf damage that amounts to 20 points and the zombie 10 points. This can always be changed to uh, reflect the game level and stuff like that, but this isn't the point of this video. So we're gonna go with a fixed value. Next, we need to return to the game board facade, get the value that is returned from the attack method. Let's call it damage. And then check if the player's health levels have dropped below 20. And if they have, we are going to use our critical health indicator. But before we do that, we need to include the new namespace. Uh, the namespace uh, that where we defined both the interface and the actual implementations of the strategy. So here we go. We have critical health indicator. We get a new instance of that. And we call the notify about damage method passing in the player's health and the damage. Else we use the regular health indicator passing in the same values. Now you might not notice the power of having a common interface, the notify about damage method interface between these two calls, but it's gonna become pretty evident in the next video where we couple this with the observer pattern and where we will pass the strategy to another class. That way it's gonna be very obvious why we need this and how it's very powerful for now. Let's understand that there's value in this, that it is working and that we are choosing the appropriate strategy on runtime. I'm gonna pick a weapon for this one. And then you can see that as long as the damage is within regular limits, we get a blue notification. If it falls below 20, we get a red one. 